What's up guys, Mike Lewis here, and welcome to the Mike Lewis Podcast. If you guys want to keep up with me on social media, you can follow me on Instagram at Mike Lewis Official, and you can follow me on Twitter at Mike Lou 52 It's where most of my updates come. If you're enjoying my content, give me a like and a subscribe. And without further ado, let's just dive right into this episode. All right, Mr. Ryan Kehoe, thanks for joining me today. How are we doing? We're doing good, man. We're doing good. Hey, it's nice to finally meet you. I feel like uh, we've both been hearing the good things I would hope about each other from uh, right. other people, and then our paths have finally uh, kind of just aligned. Yeah, I'm into it. Yeah. You know, especially being from Jersey and all, like I Jersey think. Jersey boys, you know. <laughs> yeah. Doesn't it feel like uh, with reality TV, like Jersey's like a popular spot for uh, casting and like doing shows or is that just. I think that it is because it's so close to New York and I don't think a lot of people that don't know the tri-state area realize that Jersey is like literally right around the corner. So it's easy for us Jersey dudes to like hop into the city, go on like open casting or whatever it is. I mean, like, Jersey's, like, pretty much New York. Let's be real, you know? I always yeah, felt pretty much. Fair. I've been in New York 20 years, lived in Jersey 15 years growing up until I graduated high school. So I feel like Jersey's, like, the sixth borough. Yeah, I, I would yeah. say so. <laughs> yeah, and I would say that, like, casting Jersey boys in New York City is, like, oh, they just crossed the river on a unicycle. <laughs> 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 wasn't it like when you were just stopping doing your original stint on the show it was like when jersey shore first was like starting yeah what was really crazy i remember going to like a meet and greet in Times square in manhattan with johanna who her and i were like doing the island i think at the time and she was living with me for a couple months like transitioning into new york at the time and we went to this meet and greet and Jersey Shore had not yet aired, but like their cast was there. It was like Snooky, J Wow, whatever. And they were like fangirling out about us being there, like, oh my God, Johanna, I love you. La, 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 la. And um, literally a year later, I went to the next meet and greet, and Jersey Shore had like blown up, like blown up. They had, like, red carpeted, like red velvet ropes surrounding them. They were like on this pedestal. And it's like we couldn't even get to them to like say hi. So their shit like blew up. And I'm like, did I audition for the wrong show? Because I'm a fucking Jersey boy. Bro. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. I, I could have been the, the cool gay friend. <laughs> but no, I mean, God yeah. bless them, man. They've turned that into yeah. such a crazy franchise. And they're killing it still many years later. Oh, my God. We, we see like now with like the other show like they're how they're pulling just like all these like people from all these different shows i that's the one show that's like sacred where i feel like they would not make that crossover you know they don't have to you know what i mean like they're just booming yeah. right now no and you know what i think they were i think all of us when we first do our our first reality show we're hungry for attention we're hungry for getting us back and you know i mean two completely different shows but I think that as much as they were like, we're fucking cool, we're Jersey Shore, I think now they're all just like becoming parents and like growing up, like realize what that fame was at that time. But I feel like a lot of them like don't necessarily want to be in the spotlight anymore. And they're like, yeah, we'll take the paycheck. We'll come back because we love each other as a cast. But I don't think that they need the money at this point. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, they're good. Yep, they're chilling. She you you couldn't have seen yourself like hypothetically speaking like say you never um you know auditioned for uh your show that you obviously are on now what you couldn't have seen yourself potentially if the timing aligned trying to go for like a jersey shore type of show right um i mean in retrospect i wish i would have because it's like really oh, you don't have to wow. and you just get to be yourself and then become like ridiculously famous and go on like Jimmy Fallon, like, you know, like 
they I don't think they knew what they were signing up for. And I think they were authentically just being themselves for sure. Um, but God bless them, man. Listen, I was like at a point where I'm like, I'm almost 25. I've always wanted to audition for the real world. I'm 24 and a half. I'm just going to like show up to an open casting. And like, you can be cast, obviously, I'm 40. So like, you can be cast till you're 52, like Mark Long or Beth. So I kind of just went into this open casting being like, all right, I'm going to be 25. Let me just wing it. Let me see if, if you know, because I've always wanted to do it, but I'm not a very motivated person when it comes to like doing casting and, and shit like that. So I, I just showed up like, all right, we'll see what happens. So it was a real world uh, audition, right? It's actually road rules. Oh, wow. Yeah, it was road rules. I, I, I think I had maybe 10 callbacks, made the finals, flew to L.A., and then, like, a few weeks before we left to film Road Rolls, I get a call from a producer, like, hey, so MTV, the ratings for Road Rolls, of the current Road Rolls that was airing at the time, is doing really shitty. So MTV is pulling the plug on Road Rolls. Do you, you want to be on this, like, new franchise, which is called Fresh Meat, or do you want to do a different casting process and be on, like try to be on the real world? And I was like, well, what do I have to do for the real world? And they were like, well, you have to like, it's a different audition process. And at that point, I'm like, I'm 24. I've been out since I was 16, like before Ellen DeGeneres came out. <laughs> I had a coming out story to be a thing, you know? I don't need like the drunk blonde girl from the Midwest that's 18 not being able to hold her liquor. Like, I just, I was like, I've been through some life. I've been in New York eight years at this point. Like, I've seen life. And I was just like, just put me on a show. If I don't have to do anything else, just throw me on a show. You know, I'll sign wherever. But, like, I don't I don't need to, like, do more work than I need to. <laughs> so I wound up being Fresh Meat. I was, like, the oldest one on our season. I think DM and I were, like, the two oldest. Two wow. old. or, yeah. So the cards kind of aligned, uh kind of well you would say in terms of what you had in mind or yeah because like yeah i didn't really need well i don't know in retrospect i'm like would it have been cooler for the fans and the viewers to see like my personality versus just being on, on a challenge and then it's just like you fast forward through like the storyline of like this is where ryan came from and this is what his story is it's like no no just throw me in a fucking arena and let's fucking battle it out do you feel like maybe do you feel like maybe you didn't get maybe enough character development on your first time Cause just kind of being thrown in, you know, right away, you know, then you had kind of that gap from fresh meat to your next challenge. Like do you feel like you wish you would have gotten more development of your character or No, I'm good. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah, I'm good because I've made these really long-term relationships and friendship with certain cast members that know me that we've spent time together off camera still talk to this day it's like no because people that know me know me you know people that have spent time with me know me um and i'm not like a fame whore ironically like for a gay man i'm really not i like doing the shows it's a blessed experience it's cool to compete and do these crazy things that people have been testing out for months that they're spending millions of dollars on apparatuses heights you know, coffins being buried alive, like all the things. It's like these people are like spending so much time and money developing these challenges and to be able to just like walk in and do them like already set up for us. It's like, how how fucking cool is that? You know? <laughs> yeah. It's so amazing. what? So what maybe uh, caused you to step away originally? Like, did you just kind of want to focus on the career path or just like, was it a lot for you maybe at the time, you know, to kind of step back into after filming? Um, so I would say that hit, like shit hit the fan in my personal life right after Fresh Me Too. Um, my father, who was very sick, he was a Vietnam vet. He had Agent Orange. He he lost his life his emphysema in like 2012 my boyfriend of four years moved out 
all all within the same chunk of time. And then I was like decompressing from being on a reality show and like being in that pattern of doing like five seasons, like close enough. So I was just like going through like a phase of like, what is my life? You know, mourning, grieving my father, mourning, grieving like my ex-boyfriend moving out. And uh, they honestly didn't call for a minute. And then they did call a couple times and it just wasn't good timing. And then I was like, oh, I shouldn't have said no because they're never going to call again because that's kind of how you feel when you're a cast member and you actually say no. Because I knew I wasn't in an emotionally healthy place to be on TV again or to compete or to be strong or to feel strong. So, yeah, I said no to a couple seasons and then they didn't call again. And then they called me for All Stars 1. And I'm like, you know what? Post-COVID, I'm going to say yes to the dress. I'm going to say yes to anything. (laughs) You know what I mean? Like, what an opportunity to come back. The paycheck was cute. Um, I wound up being an alternate on All Stars 1, which was totally fine. Um, And then wound up competing on All All Stars 2. So I feel more confident at 40. I'm just like, yeah, I'll do whatever. Yeah, sure. Hey, (laughs) Pay me and I'm down. (laughs) Was it ever tough for you to come back to like normal life transitioning like after filming for X amount of time away? Because I've heard that from a lot of people like it's very hard when, you know, say if you're I mean, at most, I mean, back when you were on the show, let's just say fresh meat, you're probably there for like at least over a month if you go to the end. You know what I mean? Like you stuck around until right before the final. That was probably your uh, longest you were there, right? Like, is it hard like coming back you know because you're pretty much like isolated from the world and then you just kind of thrust back into like your normal whatever everyday life prior to filming was that like difficult or challenging at all of course i mean i would say i've spoken to like quite a few people from all stars 2 and all stars 3 which hasn't aired yet but uh yeah it kind of interrupts your life and you're in this bubble and you obviously feel blessed and grateful to be selected amongst thousands of people that wanted to be on the show. And then you have this experience with these people. You don't have your phone. So you're forced to interact with people in person. You don't have music. You don't have media. You don't have any distractions. So you're forced to just hang out with these people. And I will say our all stars two was my favorite, you know, like short lived, I mean, we were there actually a lot longer than it looks like on TV because there was a couple COVID scares and there was a hurricane and like there there was delays in production where we had to like shut down for a minute. But I, I mean, 22 out of 24 of these cast members, I've done shows with in the past. So it really felt like camaraderie. And it was like, but like Melinda, my first partner in Fresh Meat 1, 2005, like her and I reconnected and we talk all the time now. Casey and I had not talked in years. My, you know, like first season as well. And everyone's just grown up. It's cool. It's like everyone's a mom or a dad or 40 or 50 or divorced or, you know, we've all been through some life experience. So it feels different this time around because even though I want to win the money just as bad as I did back in my 20s, there's less like hurt feelings, if that makes sense. Yeah. It's kind of like, listen, I've been through worse shit than losing a fucking elimination. You know, (laughs) I'm okay to go back to New York City and like, yeah, I think we've all suffered in a lot of ways and also have grown in a lot of ways. So I I really love doing All-Stars too. You know, I don't know, you know, losing a tic-tac-toe thing, you might be hard to show your face in New York City, and I don't know, this might be a tough one, <laughs> I'm just kidding. No, you're allowed, you can bust my balls, it's, <laughs> it's a Jersey bro thing, it's totally yeah, fine. Yeah, you know, it's a Jersey thing. I was really, I was so, like, I was so, like, in the moment, first of all, you know, it's like, hurry up and wait, hurry up and wait, it was, like, really late at night by the time they actually got their shit together not talking shit about production everyone works really hard but you think you're going to compete at a certain time and then hours go by and you're like ready like you have like that yeah you know, you're amped up and then you're like okay now i'm falling asleep on the bus and uh you know tic-tac-toe seems really simple 
but then you put like flames on top of that. Then you put in goggles that are fogging up from the humidity of being in the Mexican jungle. Then you put in, oh, it's 2 a.m. Then you put in, oh, the balls went out, like the fire went out because they didn't douse it enough with lighter fluid. And then you can't tell which whole the other person. It was a it was a very confusing thing. We had to reset quite a few times, but Kahata in the end honestly kicked my ass. And that's totally fine. If I was going to lose to anyone, I'd want to lose to Kahata because he's like a brother to me. Yeah, and I feel like with that elimination setup, it was almost like the best and worst elimination concept at the same time because on surface level, you kind of look at it and you're like, are, they, are we really going to have these adults just play tic-tac-toe in this elimination arena? But on the same token, you know, you look at the matchups, obviously, you kind of give everybody an even playing field, you know what I mean? Like, I feel like, in some regard, I, that was a smart idea by kind of letting it uh, up to chance. I agree with you. I didn't realize that Kahata was such a little stealth ninja. Like, yeah. Yeah. I mean, he had, like, the right size hazmat suit, whatever you want to call that, the beekeeper <laughs> uniform. He was, his his suit was appropriately his size mine kind of cut my angles off like so when i was trying to like run full speed it was like my legs were like little like <laughs> tyrannosaurus rex ankles but like switched the wrist for the ankles um i'm not blaming it on that because he honestly beat me fair and square but uh yeah i mean you literally you're like <laughs> it there's so many factors there's so many factors the goggles were rough we had to put by the way, I got like an ear infection from the flame retardant gel that they slobbed on all of us. Wow. And I just got my hearing back maybe like less than a month ago. And we filmed this in August. Yeah. Jeez. So I got like a wild. Well, it was a combination of that and the pool that they never cleaned. <laughs> I heard the thing. I don't know about it on All Stars, but I heard like the thing in the challenge is like people uh, use the pools in the shower. Yeah, well, okay, so they put us in this beautiful, huge house right on the beach. Derek and I actually almost got fined. Derek uh, Chavez, we almost got, like, fined because we got permission from production to swim in the ocean. Why would we not swim in the ocean? It's right on our property. And so we get permission from production, and then a security guard, like, giant, doofy guy comes and starts yelling at us, saying that he's going to dock our pay for swimming in the ocean, we're like, why would you put us on a beach front without letting us swim in the ocean that's cleaner, that's salt water? Like, you know what I mean? It's a different thing. To s and they didn't clean the pool. I'm not talking shit about you, MTV. I'm just saying we all got ear infections from the pool that you didn't clean and you didn't let us swim in the ocean. But apparently it was like a liability for us to possibly drown. Yeah. Uh, you know how it goes. But. <laughs> I do. So how did you uh, first hear about All-Stars, or how was it, like, approached to you? Like, did Momo just kind of give you that call? Um, okay, so I had not done a podcast for anything challenge, and uh, I got re um, Derek Kaczynski and Scott Yeager reached out to me. I was visiting my sister for the holidays last year, and uh, – Derek called me and he's like, hey, do you want to do this podcast? I'm like, oh, my God, I haven't visited this part of my life in like 11 years. But, yeah, of course, it's you, Derek. I love Derek. And so I wound up doing this podcast while visiting my sister. And I don't think this had anything to do with it. But it was weird to, like, talk about my challenge experience from a decade plus ago. And literally the next day, Mark Long reached out to me on Instagram and he's like, would you be willing to do or, or would you be willing to talk to a producer from Buna Murray about doing this All Stars thing, which is All Stars one. And he's like, um, this producer, Aleda, who I knew from back in the day is going to reach out to you. And so she called me within the hour and was like, hey, Ryan. And like it was history from there. I had to like obviously like fill out the Bible and do the medical and have like an hour and a half. Actually, it wound up being like two and a half hour, like psychological exam on Skype with like a therapist just to make sure I was like sane enough to do it, which I'm not. 
Um, <laughs> I'm from Jersey. You know how we cry. Hey, not all of us, sir. <laughs> no, I'm not crazy, but um, crazy enough. So it just happened so quickly, and uh, I wound up flying. I mean, I really honestly owe it all to Mark Long. Like, he thought of me and reached out to me, and it was just, you know, I don't necessarily, like, check my Instagram instant messages, and I happened to that day, and it just happened to be right after I did this podcast for Challenge Mania. So I was already, like, in my head about, like, oh, thinking about the challenge, and um, yeah, I wound up getting cast on the official cast for season one, and then once we got to Argentina, they made me an alternate, which I was like, that's cool. <laughs> and I get to hang out in Argentina with Casey Cooper, Cajada, Sophia, and Heather Cook. I'm good. Yeah, yeah. With my cell phone and drinking wine every night in a courtyard. Yeah, it was a it was a really good like way to dip my toe back into the challenge world. We had a great time. So would you say like the timing and everything just kind of aligned in that situation? Like say had, um, you know, ha- had it not been fresh in your mind, like when you were first reached out, would there have been like more hesitation or you just feel like um, it was just the right timing? You just knew and decided, you know what, like something clicked and you decided you wanted to uh, go back down this rabbit hole, I guess you can call it. Totally a rabbit hole. Yeah, I think like after COVID, like all of us feeling so isolated and scared and like remote like the idea of traveling because let me tell you when we went to argentina for all stars one we were the only americans on the plane like they weren't letting anyone from south america but we had visas that mtv you know set us up for so just i felt very lucky this is january of 2021 where like everything was shut down still there were no vaccinations and i'm just kind of like life is so short like it's like covid made made me step back a notch so anytime i'm getting an opportunity to make money to travel to try something new and also like turning 40 i was like what do i have to lose bro you know like yeah fuck it. yeah it, yeah the stars aligned and i think derek calling me the day before which was complete like happenstance was like motivation to be like, yeah, I'm going to do it. So, so knowing what you know now, what, what would you, uh, you think like you preferred how it worked out, like getting on two or like, you know, it's maybe we're yeah, hoping wanna, to get on one. Yeah. I want to compete again. I mean, Hey, I'll take an alternate page check. If you want to make me on the sidelines, that's cool too. I'll jump in if somebody gets COVID, but I mean, I, I don't know. Both experiences were so cool. Like I got to hang out in Argentina and do things and not have a camera in my face. But then at the same time, being in the house, I got to compete and do some weird shit, which is always the best. It's like I'm a very competitive person. Like I know I'm not the most athletic, but I'm competitive. And uh, I also just like love these people. Not all of them, but most of them. (laughs) <laughs> i'm glad you pointed that out about yourself because i was going to bring that up as well um with a cast member like yourself you know we're we're sometimes used to seeing like your typical frat or like meathead right but i think like someone like yourself like an underrated cast member is someone who has the ability to kind of like make fun of themselves but also like read the room and like just you know be, be, be a sense of normalcy you know like because if you're a fan watching the show and uh you know someone like yourself right and they're watching you like and they could relate to you i think that's like something they could appreciate and that's um what made the show so special in the first place is cast members like yourself that are just normal people you know what i'm saying i very much appreciate that i mean i'm clearly not like normal normal but like i'm like unapologetically myself i have no problem telling it like it is i think that was like my biggest breakthrough doing all stars 2 i don't have ill will in my heart for nehemiah but when he like pulled the shit that he pulled i had no problem calling him out back in the day i wouldn't want i would not have wanted to rustle feathers also i wouldn't have volunteered myself to be team captain back in the day because i was afraid that like oh we're gonna lose and then i go on elimination i had no fucking fear going in this And I think that's just because I've been through, like, the hardest things in my life since doing Crush Me Too. 
like a lot of a lot of like grief and a lot of loss and a lot of struggle. So I kind of came in this. Yes, I am the dude that's like gets along with most people and like want to bring people together. But I'm also like, don't fucking cross me, bitch, because I will fucking call you out and cut you with my words. I mean, if you want to like physically take it to the arena, we can do that. But I just had no fear going into this. And that was like huge for me. That was a big breakthrough. Well, what did kind of rub you the wrong way about that Nehemiah uh, nomination? Like, do you feel like his reasoning was BS? Like, or was there truth to it? You get like when you lose a challenge and you're automatically going in, you panic and you look around the room and you're like, oh, I could take him. I could take him. It, the only thing that pissed me off about Nehemiah and the way that he. <laughs> there's so many, so many elements that you ha- you didn't get to see, but I saw in real time. Like, I thought that I was going to be literally the last name out of his mouth because that's what he said to me. He reached out to me before season one when he knew that I was getting cast before season two. Like, and I even made a joke, like, you ready to send me home again? He goes, Ryan, you'd be the last name out of my mouth. Are you kidding me? And then yet I was the first one. And so that hurt my feelings because he was like licking my asshole. And now, you know, now he's like, oh, I'm, I'm like panicking because it wasn't his fault that they lost the first challenge. I kind fell into the water. So he was just guilty by association. He had to go in no matter what. And uh, but he didn't say it to my face. He was like walking around like all salty and just like fluffing his feathers. There was like that. Uh, which I saw in real time because Derek Chavez and I were in the pool when he's punching the punching bag and like going crazy. Like I had no idea that that was about the fact that he didn't get me. Like he didn't get the person that he wanted. Number one, but also like, bro, you're like twice my size, like muscular wise, like I'm taller than you, but like you're twice my size and you're like, beating the fuck out of the punching bag because you're salty that you didn't get me but like doing it in front of me and i'm like well, uh it was, you know, he's a he's a he's a character i like nehemiah i do I, there's like a brotherly love but he's become a very shifty person in this challenge universe that can't be trusted that's just my personal opinion well i think and my theory is i think like because a lot of these individuals didn't have this wave of like press and like kind of the way the challenge is viewed now, as opposed to when it was back when you all were first on it, it's yeah. definitely viewed in like a different way. So I think like that kind of heightens everybody's like personalities, maybe. Just my theory. No, it's true. And, you know, Nehemiah kind of gets like or has been screwed in the past for trying to be loyal to like the dudes that run the game. And they kind of have controlled him like a puppet, like, oh, take out this person so we don't have to go against them. And I think his loyalties lie in weird places. And I think he means well. And I think his heart is I think he has a good heart, but this was like the first time that I was like, fuck you, bro. Fuck you. You know, like your word is your word and you, you reached out to me, dude. You know, like we don't talk in real life, like on a regular basis, like a text here and there for a birthday over the years, but like, we don't talk. We're not close like that, but we went through gauntlet three together. Our fucking team was horrible. And, um, I was actually happy to go out against him. I put up a good fight, fight, and like, you know, I mean, in the end, like, he beat me. But it, it was a good like hour of pushing that freaking thing against each other. Like, I like ripped my shoulder open. I gave everything that I could, and uh, in the end, he won fair and square. So what, was, what is? It was heartbreaking. It was heartbreaking being Derek's housemate on this one knowing what he was going through behind the scenes no one else knowing what he was going through behind the scenes i think he put up a really good fight i think he came off looking great um but yeah i felt bad because Derek kaczynski like protected me because we have history and we're friends outside of the show and that Derek just happened to be like the scapegoat because he was like the second person that nehemiah wanted to go against no one felt good about Derek going in 
no one did. Especially yeah. like the Cancun Fresh Meat Alliance that like went into the show with friendship. Yeah, we were heartbroken when Derek went home. Yeah, I couldn't imagine being in, like, an env- I mean, granted, like, All-Stars seems, like, a little bit more lighthearted of an environment, but, like, still, just being in that environment in general off the heels of, like, such a, you know, tragic right. event to occur is just, like... But I'm glad that at least if he were to experience that, he was with the crew that he was with, you know what I mean? Like, having, like, you and, um, you know, two people from his real world there that he still remains close to. Like, I'm glad that at least he had people around him, you know what I mean? It's Jasmine's birthday today. Shout out to Jasmine. Happy birthday, Jasmine. <laughs> Let, let's dive into uh, canned meat now. You kind of teased it with me before. I gotta. We need the full details. So, could you walk me through what canned meat is? <laughs> well, according to Derek, it's actually canned meat, not canned. But I've been saying canned meat. So, I mean, canned that works. meat sounds a little better. I don't even know that started but i think it was casey cooper that like renamed our whatsapp group before we actually filmed canned meat and we were like that's fucking genius and hilarious um casey and i reconnected obviously doing all stars one as alternates like we spent all that time together we went to miami when we got back stayed there for a week so her and i were already close um derek and i have like remained friends throughout all these years seen each other like a handful of times but like he lives in arizona i live in new york um but yeah when i first met derek it was kind of him and his cast going on to real world cancun as i was like kind of exiting my reality challenge career if you want to call it so we kind of like collided at like him entering me exiting and uh you know, when we both got called for All Stars 2, we reached out to each other on Facebook Messenger, as we do as cast members. And we just, we started a conversation. Then I added Casey into our WhatsApp and then John A and Jasmine. I had met John A once. I had not met Jasmine in person, although now she's one of my closest friends that I talk to every day. Uh, and so we just were like, all right, listen, we're, we have like a solid five of us that could like do the thing or at least try to support each other. So we were just like not ever going to call each other's name into the arena. We didn't know what the rules were, but we were all like, we adore each other and we were just on like a text thread. We didn't discuss it openly, but it was pretty obvious in the house, like who we fucked with (laughs) for sure. And I love, I love John A. I love Jasmine. I love Derek. I love Casey. It was just kind of like a quiet alliance where it's like, we're not necessarily like top dogs, but if we stick together, we can, you know, support each other as best we can. So did the rest of the house have any idea or uh, weren't really too? uh... I don't think they voiced it, but I think it was obvious we just loved each other. Oh, you know. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> so you I'm sure they did i'm sure they did we didn't talk about it openly but i i'm sure that they absolutely had an idea that we were all like in cahoots yeah so so you mentioned uh gauntlet three before i need to know your stance on it because i hear that uh from some of your other cast members that gauntlet three is the season that nobody talks about <laughs> since really it- yeah, well, I mean, that's just what Tyler said. He says everybody made a pact that, like, Gauntlet 3 is the, the shit season that everybody just chooses to uh, gaze over. See, I felt that way about the island. Gauntlet well, I do, yeah. but Gauntlet 3 was, like, kind of my season that I actually had clout and was able to, like, pull some strings. I mean, I personally orchestrated... The few times that the rookies won, which was very few and far between, I orchestrated single-handedly Beth is going against Coral. Like, that's happening. That was you? That was me, dude. That was me. The entire team wanted other females to go in. I think Beth was already set to go in. And I was like, no, we're sending in Coral. Like, this fucking bitch with this big mouth, she needs to, like, work, (laughs) work for it. So I just thought it was going to be historical to see these, like, at the time, I called them old bitches, but really now in retrospect, they were, like, 
Coral was probably 35, Beth was 41, which now I'm close to 41. So, but at the time it was like, yo, let's throw the old dinosaurs in together. And it was a great battle, you know, it was physical and it was in the sand and they were like covered in sand on their face. And it was awesome to watch. But yeah, I was the one that kind of convinced my team, like, even if this isn't the smartest move and like viewers are going to love watching this happen. So, oh, I mean, you, I mean, debate, debatably, you kind of set the stage for, you could argue the two most iconic lady figures in terms of just like, you know, personalities, um, in the history of this show, just <laughs> up against each other right there. <laughs> well, uh, listen, I haven't seen Coral since we did like an appearance together in like Memphis, like 12 years ago, but I have reconnected with Beth and I, I actually, she gets a really rough edit. She does. Very much shown as like a villain, but Beth's a good girl. She's, you know, I didn't really know her even in the Gauntlet 3 much. Like, I, I didn't know her, which is why I didn't feel bad, like, making that elimination be what it was. But she's she's a really, she's a sweet girl. I like that. So now what I'm thinking is every time that someone uh, watches that elimination on Paramount, some residuals need to uh, come your way, I think, is what yeah. we got to arrange for, you know? No, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That was like a kind of rough stretch, I feel like, in terms of, uh, you know, kind of the shows that you were like on at the time. Like a lot of people call that era of the show, like the dark era of the show with like just that kind of stretch of like all three islands and all, you know. Yeah, I mean, that was like <laughs> that unfortunately was like the dark era, but it was like the peak of me, like making a name for myself, I guess. I wasn't, like, trying to make a name for myself. I was just being me. But, like, you know, I'm a fucking gay dude from Jersey. Like, I got, I have, like, an evil streak in me. And so when I see, like, an opportunity or, or like, to make a move or influence socially something to happen, especially at that time, you know, I'm going to make it happen. What was, like, your experience on the island, like, personally? Like, was it as <laughs> bad as it was cracked out to be? Or... Could you have uh, done better than some other people in that environment? I mean, it was the first time I made it to a final. So for that, I'm like, you know, like giving myself a pat on the back. Uh, that's when Jen Grijalva and I forged our friendship because we shared like whatever that like Chris family Robertson. What is that called? What is that? What is that story book? Oh, God, you're asking the wrong guy. I don't read books. Come on. <laughs> no, it's like it, 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 we like lived outside in like a beautifully orchestrated um, tree house, essentially. Jen and I shared a bungalow on a hammock and Jen and I became like super close. We wound up being in the final together with Paula and Robin. Insert. Jen, Ryan, Paula, Robin sailing a boat against Kenny, Derek, Johnny, and Evelyn. Like, you do the math. Eh. Uh, I honestly enjoyed that season because I was so starving. <laughs> we were all starving. Like, all the dudes, we were showering in the lagoon. We all got, like, staph infections in our beards. Everyone was suffering. Jen got stung by, like, well, no, a uh, Abram got stung by, like, a wasp's net. Jen got bit to the point where her body is still permanently scarred from... Really? The yeah, her and I shared the same hammock. I guess I don't have the blood type that mosquitoes want in Panama, but Jen was scarred from head to toe and still has scars that haven't recovered. It was gnarly. It was like, okay, if you're going to do, like, a survivor-type challenge like do it right but they were like oh here's alcohol but here's no food and we were all like eh, you know suffering oh, Lord. yeah yeah that that was like the height well i mean survivor's still big but like that was like the uh i guess the climax of like when survivor was um you know kind of first hitting its peak i would say so i yeah. think that's what the i think that's what they were going for maybe yeah they'll never do another island again um, I can 
Hey, Paula and I were living together in New York City at my old apartment. And we flew back, you know, going from Panama, like overnight, so many different layovers. We got back to our apartment and we put on MTV when I still had cable before streaming was a thing. And our commercial for the island aired at like two o'clock in the morning. And we're both looking at each other like, whoa, that's a quick turnaround because we literally just started filming or stopped filming like two days ago. So that was fun. Yeah, I heard people were like hopping over um, and stealing food and stuff. Well, I didn't hear. I was told. But like, you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. No, Johnny. Johnny actually not the biggest fan of him as a human being, but we were all starving and they did. They broke the fourth wall and like jumped over the fence to where production was. And, and they got caught after they came back from the fence. But Johnny, I think it was Johnny. Maybe it was Kenny. Hands me I think two. It was both of them, yeah. They one of them handed me two hard boiled eggs, and I was like, <sighs> I like put it in my pocket, and I get, I tapped Jen on the shoulder, and I was like, can we go walk into the woods? It was like two o'clock in the morning, and she walks with me, and I hand her an egg, and she was like, where did you get this? I'm like, shh, eat it together, and her and I ate this hard boiled egg, two of them each, and we're just like. Oh, it was like the best thing we ever tasted because we were so hungry and she was like are you sure you want me to have this i'm like yeah no 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 you're my you're my girl we're gonna share these hard-boiled eggs that's how desperate and ridiculous we were <laughs> were you there when um abram did like that like he dressed up in a ninja suit and like <laughs> ran out of the uh did like a somersault out of your guy's window of the cabana i think you guys were staying in and he went over into the production thing too because he said that he took the food he had like hot dogs um eggs and he like i guess like where you guys would make your usual rice so that when people came over to see what he was making he would hide the food that he took from the you know production site underneath the rice so that people would be like oh it's just rice and then when they would leave he would eat the food Oh my god, I never got that part of his hot dog. I'm really pissed. <laughs> this is your first time hearing about this? I figured everybody... Uh, yeah, it is, actually. Like, full-fledged ninja. Oh, I believe it, though. Abram's fucking nutty pants. I love him, but he's, uh, he's a fucking wild one. <laughs> I think, like... I, and I want to hear your opinion, too, because um, this is, like, my favorite house that has ever been had a challenge done in it i like am enamored by the uh fresh me two house beautiful just my the best house i've ever experienced yeah beautiful it was like the most ginormous log cabin in whistler on a mountain just like it was huge i'm like who can afford to actually own this i know somebody does and they're getting paid well and compensated well for us to rent this not us but like production yeah it was it was fucking rustic it was gorgeous the, like the log beams on the ceiling the high ceiling you know and then you like go into the rooms and you're like oh eight bunk beds in one room cool got it yeah, <laughs> I feel like that was like the challenge that like was the final nail in the coffin in terms of like cutting off like alcohol consumption or like limiting it or something like that. Because that, that just seemed like I mean, you see on a lot of challenges like partying is like a big thing, but it felt like that one in particular. Like, I don't know why, like that just stood out like more than some of the other ones in terms of like how often you guys would party in that house. Well, they started off with like the normal alcohol regime and then like within a couple days they were like yeah no more brown liquor and it was like okay because people just wow. got out you know they never used to do that back in the day they would give us whatever we wanted we actually could even put in like liquor requests and yeah that season was when they were like yeah we don't want fist fights we don't want blackout we don't want people dying of alcohol poisoning <laughs> Did you, where, was that like, uh, where, where did that stack up in terms of like, was that your favorite challenge before all stars or was yes. it? Yes. You, you kind of got, you kind of got the raw end of the deal in that one. Like you should have made the final. They like switched up the, uh, I think like it was 
the voting system every other time up until the final elimination, and then I think it was just like the last that two teams. That was Gauntlet Three. Oh, okay. I th- I could have sworn it, you got. Dan and I played both sides. Her and Nor and me and Teresa. We kind of played both sides. Like I was loyal to Kenny. I was loyal to Wes. Same with Jen. Um, and we were we well we were shady in the sense that like yeah we were playing both sides, but like we weren't strategically plotting against either one of them like both their teams were out of our mouth like we never voted either one of them in but we were just kind of like being coy and like yeah i mean we we managed to not go in an elimination until right before the final and i think that it was like i think it was appropriate that jen and Nora and me and Teresa had to go against each other in the exile because it's like all right, we played a good social game. Now it's time to, like, which of the two of our teams needs to, like, fight to be in the final. I thought thought that was a season that, like, you kind of deserved your final spot. I feel like you played an underrated political game. Thanks, man. That's that's just my opinion, but... (laughs) I concur. I agree. Yeah. I don't know if you knew this. Teresa actually came back, like, uh, recently. She was she on a season or she was like a, a double agent or whatever, like assassin, whatever they call it now. <laughs> well, the season was called Double Agents, but yeah, she was she was back. Not the one that's currently airing, like, but the one before it. Yeah. Yeah, I think she, I actually think she's a really, really strong competitor. Um, I think it was her first show when I did Fresh Me yeah. Too. She was just kind of like. What's going on? I'm from Wisconsin. Like, she was strong physically, but she just kind of was, like, riding whatever wave that I was, like, making out for her. Plus, she was, like, hooking up with Wes for a minute. So, like, we we had, like, we had things going on. Kenny and I are, were very close at the time. So, we were able to, like, socially work it, for sure. Yeah. Were you who 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 if any like are you surprised like out of like both fresh meats that have like that went on to become like kind of like figure points like in the show like who because like you know Teresa did her thing for a while Car Maria I mean she's like biggest her, surprise. yeah I mean I mean not surprised because she's fucking gorgeous and she's also a beast like she's a great competitor yeah. Um, I don't really know her personality because I only did Fresh Me Too and she was eliminated first, which was also of my devices. <laughs> Throwing in her and Darrell was like a smart move like early in the game. Um, but we didn't know Cara Maria either. So like we just saw her stats and saw her like do that trial thing with the push-ups and all that. And we were like, we need to get this girl out because she's going to like... She's going to reign supreme, especially being paired with Darrell. Like, come on. So it was very surprising. I think it was Jill and Pete that sent them home in yeah. that first nation, right? Yeah. I in touch with Jill. She's one of my favorite people. <laughs> yeah. I, um, I, I actually, like, tried getting her on here, like, a while back. And she, like, mentioned about, like, um, like keeping up with you and stuff. I love so, her. Yeah. She's awesome. Um, who oh yeah laurel's the other one like were you impressed with her like when she's a mean girl i liked her like i liked her when i was doing fresh me too she's just been a real mean person she just really yeah yeah i mean she's she's a different person off the show she's a different person when she's not like talking about somebody but she like she said some really mean shit to paula who was oh 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 yeah. i know you're... i don't fuck with like making fun of people's appearances or mental health or you know she's just she's i just don't think she's nice she's never not been nice to me like as far as she's concerned her and i are cool but i i just won't forgive that kind of like behavior yeah, I mean, that's, like, some... St- now you reminded me, of like, when you mentioned it, because I completely drew a blank. But um, that's, like, some things, like, I feel like that would not fly, like, today. You know, like, if... But, yeah. So. But, strong as fuck. Yeah. You know, like... Yeah, for sure. 
strong. I got along with her on Fresh Me too. I think the the shit she said about Paula was like after I was off the show. But I know that Paula was really hurt and like to revisit it and watch the actual season in real time sober. Paula was like, it's just so mean, you know? It's like there's a a line between being like cutesy, funny for camera's sake, making like coy remarks and then just attacking somebody's physical appearance. So I, I don't fuck with that shit. Yeah. Yeah. So I need I need the tea now, like because I've obviously like heard that you and Shane, what what was the deal there? Like, um, you guys knew each other before you went on the show. Yeah, we dated. Oh. Yeah, we dated. Shane and I dated probably like a year before he lived in North Carolina. I was still in New York City. We dated when he was still in North Carolina. We met through mutual friends. Listen, I knew who he was. I'm not like I watched Real World Road Rules growing up since 91, 92, whenever the first season was. So I was like a fan of the show. That's why I auditioned for the show. So I knew who he was and he knew that I knew who he was. But we started dating and um, it was like long distance. I would visit him in North Carolina. He would come up to New York. It was like not like committed relationship. Right. Shane and I. Yeah. I dated before I did Fresh Meat One. Um, I didn't. I went on an open casting. Like when I saw the commercial, if you want to be an MTV dot or MTV's next challenge, go to Midtown and here's the information. Go online. I wound up showing up to like the open casting. It was like six o'clock in the morning. It started at seven. I was like one of the first group of forty people there. Actually, I saw Evelyn. We were in the same group. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So, you know, they went around the room. It was like 40 of us at like a circular table at like a strip club. Obviously, there was there was an active strip club in that moment because it was stupid o'clock in the morning. And they were like, oh, um, we're going to talk about sex. We're putting a stick in the middle of the table. Just say one thing about yourself that you have to say about sex. And so somebody gr- grabbed it. I don't remember what they said. Put the stick in the middle of the table i jumped over the table grabbed it and i said i only sleep with straight men and that it was a wrap it was like okay tap 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 can you fill out this bible of paperwork i wasn't doing it to be manipulative or be like i need a one-liner i just was like well no that was kind of my mo in life especially in high school and college was like i always sought after the straight men that i could like turn because there was like a control factor for me and that was the truth of what my reality was at that time. Anyway, I didn't, I, <laughs> I wasn't surprised I got cast. But when I made it to the finals, I finally told Shane, hey, I'm going to L.A. for the next challenge. And he was like initially very excited for me, but then turned very quickly and was very jealous. Like, this is my shit. This is like my world. So he didn't really enjoy me like being a part of it and uh i think it was veronica that told production that i had been cast on fresh me too at this point shane had broken up with me and it was supposed to be danny diaz at the time on fresh meat as one of the veterans and they kind of bumped him off to put room for shane because veronica had told production that like wow yeah so the first time i see shane after we break up is in Australia on Fresh Meat 1, my first challenge, camera in my face, Shane there, and, like, us not having closure. It was really fucked up. So, you guys, were you, like, you know, obviously you were going to L.A. and he knew, like, that you were going. Were you guys already broken up at the point, like, you were pretty much knew you were getting casted, you were together? He broke up with me after he found out I was officially a cast member. Wow. So pretty much like pen to paper, I'm on the cast, and then it's not, we're done. Yeah, and he wasn't malicious then. He was malicious when we did the show together, because it's Shane. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I adore him. I have love in my heart for him. We have reconciled. We, are, we have both been through this crazy reality world scenario. And like, you know, he did his shows. My first season was his last season for a long time. I did my shows, and then he came back on the show. 
to do like a few more seasons. So, and now I've come back. It's just like we've kind of like rotated. Like, <laughs> he like gets it. He gets the insanity that is this challenge universe. I think that I've had like a better edit than he has. I think that he's been like painted as like more villain, whereas I'm like naked dude in a hot tub, like peace, love, and happy. Yeah. <laughs> So how, if I could ask, like, how did, how was it that you guys met in the first place? Was it like a MySpace thing? Because social media wasn't like, uh, yet a thing. No? No, we literally, I mean, I live in New York, so I work with a lot of, like, production people, makeup artists. At, at the time, I was working at a restaurant. This is, like, 2004, in the middle of Chelsea. You know Chelsea. It's, like, yeah. the place to be seen. So lots, I mean, like, Mariah Carey. Janet Jackson, a lot of like famous people would come in and it just was that kind of bar and restaurant that like just famous people, reality people, whatever would come in. And he was friends with my ex-boyfriend from high school, who's a makeup artist. And uh, Jason introduced the two of us. So it was kind of like that's how we sealed, sealed our crush with each other. But also Shane was born 601 a.m., May 5th, 1981. I was born 701, May 5th, 1981. We're like literally an hour apart. Can't I don't know make that up. But like, that's crazy. You know, like you meet somebody born the same day, an hour apart from you. Well, now I'm going to have to write down your birthday so I'll forget it. Otherwise, I want to feel like a bad friend. Okay. <laughs> 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 i heard that uh for a while you and uh paul when you guys were living with each other that was like the place to be whenever people were in town correct yeah we kind of became like hotel buta murray <laughs> airbnb yeah it was like you know everyone films their shit in new york like um reunions or like after shows whatever like new york 25 25 Broadway in Times Square, I think was the name of the, it still is the name of the place. Um, so when people would come in, either I knew them or Paula knew them or we both knew them and they'd be like, can we stay with you? Like extend our trip? And we're like, yeah, of course. Can be creepy in our fucking hotel real world. Yeah, we had a lot of, a lot of situations at apartment. Uh oh. Good, good one. Well, bad situations? Bad. Sure. Somewhere yeah. in between? Not bad ones, but just like blackout ones. Oh, well, yeah. that's never that's never the worst thing. I mean. Oh, it's like whose bed am I waking up in? Doesn't matter. I'm still going to spoon them. Cool. <laughs> Was that like, did you get to go on um, those like bar appearances that people were doing on the shows or like any speaking engagements or? I never did a speaking engagement. I think that was kind of like hitting its tail end. But yes, I did plenty of creepy bar experiences where I'm like, where am I? Who is this person? Just pay me and let me get back to my hotel. Could you could could you go through any stories like that? Like any creepy places that you attended? I mean, I can't name names because I don't remember the names. But I can tell you this one particular Kansas City gay bar appearance. (laughs) I like, you know, the bar, the bar owner was such a super fan, which is great. Thank you. Promoted it well. I got paid. But he was like very much obsessed with me. He kept trying to like offer me drugs all night. Oh, my God. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, mm, I'm good. I mean, Kansas City, I'm not going to put anything on my nose. Thanks. Um, not that I do drugs. I've done plenty in my life, but, like, at this particular time. So I just kept drinking through it because he kept, like, trying to, like, nuzzle under my arm. And so I, I, I drank a lot. And then they asked me to get on the mic. Like, the drag queen that was working then, I was like, can you get on the mic? And so I get on the mic, and they're playing music loud. No one can hear me on the mic. So I just start dancing on the pole. And I have, oh like, God. cranberry and vodka, which I you couldn't pay me to drink that drink now. But that was my thing at, like, 27. And so I start dancing with, like, the drink. And the pole breaks. <laughs> <laughs> I go flying to the crowd. Cranberry vodka all over my white tank top. Just covered, like, just, it just happened so quickly 
And I'm like, oh my God, I'm so not cool anymore. But also like, you need to secure the pole that I'm dancing on. Like, it just, it happened all so quickly. I was like, okay, this is the worst appearance I've ever done in my life. And I literally just broke the pole off the ceiling and fell into a crowd of people and got cranberry vodka all over everyone. It was just like, <sighs> you'll be back in New York tomorrow, Ryan. Just go back to your hotel. You got this. Yeah. So they, they had they had you going there. Uh, you were a solo gig that night? Yeah. <sighs> oh, my God. Yeah. Sounds rough. You know, only things you can do in your 20s. That is true. <laughs> like, like, you want to pay me to sit in a library and read a book to children? Yeah, I can do that. <laughs> oh, don't tell me you got one of those gigs. No, can you imagine? No, no, no. no. <laughs> just meaning, Someone like, from... I'm like an uncle of seven now, like, you know, just my age. I'm, like, dancing on a pole. I mean, I'd still get on the pole. Give me enough yeah. shots. Yeah. <laughs> So in closing now, like what what is the over and under that say like in the future, you know, Ryan gets a, another call and another crack at it. Are we going to see you again or? Absolutely. Love it. All right. Well, uh, I had a fun time chat with you today. Thank you for your uh, precious time. And it was uh, nice meeting you. I'll let you know when this is out. Sounds good. Great to meet you as well. Thank you All for right. your time. Have a good night. You too.